Now, these are honestly not as rare or hard to come by as you may think, but if you're only shopping at thrift stores and garage sales, chances are you won't find them. Hey, it's Don. Today I want to talk a little bit about scarcity of some items. Um, a lot of things are assumed to be super, super scarce just because of an event or someone they may be tied to. I hear this all the time. Now, that just isn't the case in so many different things. Today, we're going to touch a little bit on famous ships and disasters just for a few minutes here. But a lot of people will assume certain types of things like something from the Titanic would never, ever show up. That's just not the case. There's so many articles so many different things that was on the Titanic and related to it that were produced in the very short time it's one trip ahead of time advertising and things like that the plates the uniforms the buttons the badges dishes glassware a lot of that was tied to the line itself tied to White Star for an example with the Titanic and the same items would have been on other ships so technically a lot of stuff is available postcards. There's quite a few postcards still available for that ship as well. They sell for several hundred dollars, but they are out there. Other famous ships such as the Hindenburg and things like that are also not that rare. Um, if you're not familiar with what the Hindenburg was, it was a dirigible, a hot air balloon basically, um, designed to carry people. Graf Zeppelin was a line of them. This is actually a cover, a envelope that flew on one of the Graf Zeppelins. You can see the stamps up there. The red seal right up here is actually a stamping showing the, the transportation flight. Then you have the Luft Post stamp here, which means airmail, basically. This is the real deal. This one flew on one of these ships. There's a close-up of the stamps. The stamps actually show one of the ships itself and again you can see it on the actual cancellation there this is from 1936 as well so it's not new but things like this can turn up in someone's attic uh, at an estate sale assuredly uh, antique auction a bulk lot of a bunch of junk just thrown in drawers from an attic are a good place uh, collections stacks of paperwork and stuff from an estate sale I've turned them up on many different occasions at various different places now this one is identifiable to the very specific Graf Zeppelin that it was dirigible it was but it's not a very well-known trip and nothing disastrous happened now on a different note for those who are up on their history, the Hindenburg, this is a picture of it right here, actually blew up in Lakehurst, and that's in New Jersey. Um, this is a perfect example of one that actually was flown on the Hindenburg itself. Now, if you're not up on your history, you may think that the Hindenburg blew up on its maiden voyage. That is not true. It made many different voyages and was around for a very long time before the disaster and the loss of life happened. Uh, even this one here, I'll flip it over in just a minute here, but this one is the LZ. It even has the number of the trip. Those LZ numbers you see on something like this, no matter what, are usually the trip number, the identification number for that specific one. Now, this one, as well as the one I just showed you, were found sourcing. It's not an uncommon fact. Many people may not realize what this is, may not read it, may not understand the significance of this piece of paper here. This is just a postcard. It's a nice postcard. It's not worth a fortune, though. You may be surprised at what some of these go for. The very first one I showed you is about 50 bucks. Now, the Hindenburg I just showed you, 75 maybe 100 on a real good day. Now, here's another one that's fairly unique. This, again, is just the Hindenburg. Someone's written the name of the ship. There's some dates. All the correct information is on this one. The stamping you see over here is the designation. It shows the whole works on it. So it has everything on this. 
Now, someone who, again, isn't up on this kind of stuff may just look at this as just a normal letter to somebody with no significant value. But just taking a few extra moments just to look at this and examine it, look up a few pieces of information that are on this, and you could be walking away with 125 bucks. Now, these all were really dirt cheap for us to acquire. Uh, it's, again, not as rare as everybody makes them out to be. Large number of the stuff that I sell are not really rare. They made them in mass quantity. Again, you can find them at estate sales, local auctions, flea markets, and places like that. Even antique malls, you'll be surprised that people won't know what they're looking at and just throw it into a booth, a dollar a piece for envelopes, a dollar a piece for postcards, and off it goes. Now, we're in Terapeak in eBay, and I have just typed in Hindenburg, and I'm looking, let's actually sort it down to the collectibles category. Now, a lot of the transportation items may have sheet music, so that's always an area you may be interested in looking at so musical instruments is where you'd find that at so that would be an area I would always recommend but mostly when I'm looking for items tied to anything transportation related I'm going to look at the transportation section in collectibles that's the majority of the time you'll find the best stuff in that category so we're going to apply that I'm going to lock it so it can't move out of this category it's already sorted by highest first and you are going to find items that uh, are related to it. Here's a Hindenburg like uh, ornamentation table display from a exhibition. China, dishes, plates, cups, saucers, all that stuff still exists. You will honestly be surprised at how much of it is actually out there. Sure, it's fairly scarce for some of these materials, but they do show up. They do show up very regularly. There's thousands of these that show up each and every year. People that are finding them are digging around. They're not just going to one specific place wondering why they can't find something. These sorts of things, I promise you, exist. The most basic, bare-bones type of collectible tied to any of these sorts of things would be an actual photograph from someone's personal uh, collection. Their grandfather had one upstairs in the attic in a drawer or something like that. We personally know quite a few people just like us who have found items related to these sorts of very well-known, very famous incidences, disasters. Again, photos are one of the most common thing that does turn up. And as you go through here, you're going to see the massive amounts of, of money that some of these go for. Here's a photograph right here for an example. They were around for quite some time. Many years you would see Graf Zeppelins. Hindenburg just happens to be one of them. I'm not sure how many flights it took prior to the disaster, but I do believe it was many and it was around for a few years. So there are probably tens of thousands of just postcards, covers, and letters that were on that ship itself. So there's many, many opportunities to run into these. Many of these aren't necessarily in a collector's estate, a collector's collection. Many of these are just owned by someone who may have been on it. Someone was uh, had a photograph of it flying overhead or something like that. No one has to be on it to actually have a piece of collectible from it. There's just so many different types of items. Uh, luggage labels are another example, which you will find. They are over here in the U.S. still because it was one of their designations in Lakehurst, New Jersey, New York. So there are still these sorts of things over here, brochures. Now, the same thing goes for the Titanic, and I've just typed in Titanic. You would be surprised at what is out there. There's a ton of items, and they don't all sell for a fortune. Things do show up. I know people have found stuff, as have we, that belonged on the ship or one of the sister ships that would have basically qualified for a ship item. It doesn't necessarily 100% have to be off the Titanic to carry a value. It just has to be tied to it. A plate, say, from one of the dining rooms on the Titanic would be identical to a plate from one of its sister ships. So they're the same basic principle. And even other ships in the line that weren't even of the same size, same construction, or anything else like that may have had the same dishes on them as well. The uniforms were universal. So if, if one captain wore a uniform on one ship, chances are all the other captains had the same uniform. So all of that sort of stuff ties to it. The brochures that they have for the Titanic were for several ships. Uh, here's a perfect example, the Olympic and Titanic. It's a brochure. 
These go for a fortune, yes, but there are many other versions of them. There's trade cards, there's tobacco, silk, and things like that that are tied to these. All of these sorts of things are, again, not quite as rare as most people lay them out to be. Now, here's a model. This is just a model, and it went for $1,100, a new model. Now, just like in the Graf Zeppelins, the china, the dishes, the silverware, spoons, forks, knives, all had their logo on it. This is a white star line uh, demi-test cup. This is from the era of the Titanic, but there's no way to know if it was on the ship. It's identical to what would have been on the ship, though, so people will highly want it either way. Now, the White Star Line ran for many, many years. Most anything tied to just the specific White Star Line will carry a value. Again, it doesn't have to be from the Titanic itself. Now, the Carpathian was the ship that rescued some of the survivors. And anything from that ship, from that line, is worth something as well. A, a, a telegraph, a telegram, a photo, um, a handkerchief from the ship with their logo on it, anything like that. There are so many items that could be found. And again, as I said, they go across the gambit in all sorts of different categories. Keys from some of the ships. Postcards, as I've said, promo ads, even cutouts, print ads from a magazine with the Titanic on it would be worth some money. So you've got to understand that everything isn't as rare as everybody would think they would be. Let's just open up one here and show you just an example of the White Star Line logo, something you need to look for. Here is a perfect example of the White Star Line. Now, many times, like the buttons and buckles and things like that from the line, all it shows is that flag with a star in the center. And if it's a buckle or it's a brass piece, it's not going to be colored. All you're looking for is the forked pennant with the star in it. That's what you need to find. It doesn't need to say White Star Line under it. Many of their items don't say that. Now, this is a wisteria pattern. This one was used on the Titanic, and hence, that's why it carries this kind of value. Now, the cup is cracked. It has some issues. Let's see. Here's the markings you will see. These sorts of things do show up out there. It may not say the White Star Line. You'll just need to know what the pennant of the ship looked like to be able to distinguish which ship it came from. There are hundreds, if not a thousand or more, patterns of flags that would have been used by steamship liners, um, Graf Zeppelins, dirigibles, planes in general, ships of all sorts. It's a huge area to find stuff. If you add up all of the disasters, all the ships, all the types of transportation there are, it goes into the tens and tens of thousands of collectibles that could be out there. And of those types of collectibles, there could be hundreds if not thousands of each one still out there waiting to be found. Well, there we have it. Hopefully that gave you some ideas, some thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends. of snuggly stuff. Buffalo, mine. Only from Fisher Price.